Because Hannah Hildago will have the ball in her hands and she'll make it happen. And one of the great characteristics of a really good Notre Dame team is everyone makes everybody better inside the details of the game. Mm -hmm. I call it serving the game. And they both certainly do that. And they played each other back on February 29th. And Virginia Tech lost at Notre Dame 71 to 58 in the next to the last regular season games for both of them. Here is Hidalgo with the ball in her hands, trying to get it inside the West Bell, who caught and couldn't get it to go. And for the second straight game, Rose Mishaw, the transfer from Minnesota, gets the starting nod in favor of Liz Kitley. But if we expect to see freshman Clara Strack a lot. She had 10 points yesterday, and she is the heir apparent to Liz in that center spot for the Hokies. Here's Mishaw. Took steps. Early on, Notre Dame with a face guard of Georgia Amore, and they are switching, so they will bump off who guards her, but basically trying to take the ball out of her hands. And there is the lineup. Anna DeWolf, the Fordham transfer, Maddie Westbell, the veteran, and Kylie Watson, very important on the inside for this team. Kayla King, a very good perimeter defender. Fifth year player, tied the ball up, but the stays with Notre Dame. First ball screen action, Pam. We see a double team, right? I think you have to continue to give Hannah Hidalgo different looks. She's got such an incredible IQ on the top of the floor for the Irish. King drawing that defensive assignment, and she is on her all the way. Watson's shot wasn't close. Three-point game, very important for Virginia Tech. Matilda Eck did not score at all yesterday against Miami, was 0 for 5 from distance. Well, Matilda Eck and Kayla King are two very good shooters, and their numbers are down a little bit. But for Kenny Brooks' team to win, you can't just rely on what happened yesterday, and that was too much Georgia Amore. They need a little more balance. Eck, the Michigan State transfer, only Daisha Fair and Georgia Amore had more threes than her this season during the regular year. Westbeld and Samuel in the post. Hidalgo short. Westbeld, this is one of her many strengths. I think she has a lot of strengths. And she looks toner and fitter than I've ever seen her. Uh, this is my first time seeing the Irish in person. And I'm telling you right now, Maddie Westbell looks like a machine out there. Having the best numbers since her freshman year. Second team all ACC this season. Amor driving against the taller Watson. She's really good at getting that pass underneath the backboard. Shot clock into single digits. Watson bumped into her. Watson fouled out yesterday. Maddie Westbelt does such a good job of reading the glass, right? She sees the shot goes up, and nobody turns and boxes her out. She is an excellent, what I would say, third option, even though I'm sure that's not the way Coach Ivy looks at it. But when you have Hidalgo and Citron on the floor, uh, that's a lot of offense. Yeah, and they certainly are the big three for them. Usually, if one of them has an off day, they are in trouble against top opponents. Amor. That's where the IQ and the skill set come together. They are hedging on that ball screen, and she attacks it, and she gets some open space. And Kenny Brooks talks about how they are on the same page. They think the game a lot alike. They're very alike personally. And Amor, one of the best. Citron, just a little bit of space is all she needs, but King comes up with the rebound, almost dragged that back foot. King brings it up, takes some pressure off of Amor, having to do so much. Mishaw can't roll it in. Hidalgo, who's a good rebounder, in fact, second on this team in rebounding, all the way, except it rolled out. Samuel with the board. That's usually what happens when your point guard is a good rebounder. They can get to their transition game fast. Mishaw. Also couldn't finish. And we see that Strack is going to check in already. She was an early sub yesterday in the semifinal against Miami. True freshman from Buffalo. Westbell can hit a three. Does just that. And too much space, too much over helping. You can't have two feet in the paint on the weak side against Maddie Westbelt. She's too good of a shooter. And so versatile, right? She can hit, kill oh, you from yeah. the inside she's, and the outside. She's so solid. And I, I think she's going to be a really good professional player. Amor can't get it to go. Misha's been all over the glass, but it goes over to the Irish.
Watch the screen right here. The screen comes here, and Amor is going to jump out on this hedge. Now, Westbelt jumps out on. She's trying to level her off, but she's so quick she can get around that hip and knock down that triple. And on the other end, too much space for Maddie Westbelt. Amor was the most outstanding player of this tournament last year when Virginia Tech won it for the first time in its history. West Bell, this time at the mid-range. All right, so here's the package right now, right? Offensive rebound, three, mid-range. Matty West Bell's game right there. And now Amor, guarded by Hidalgo, goes underneath. Strack is in the game, number 13 in white. Kayla King misses, but Strack making an immediate impact. Strack played 28 minutes yesterday. That's the most she's played in her career. She's going to have to be able to withstand playing somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes for Kenny Brooks's team in the postseason. Yeah, Brooks concerned because the Irish are a physical team. Strack, a freshman, that's a terrific roll with a bucket by Watson. You know why that wide open look, Pam, is because the activity on the weak side occupies the help at the rim. It's a really well-designed play by Notre Dame. Watson is the first Irish player not named Matty Westbell to score in this game. Amor attacks Hidalgo. And Hannah, probably the fastest player in the league. Citron took steps before she made her move. Notre Dame up 9-5 as we take our first break. Boy, do I love some good ball screen offense. Westbell in the mid-range. Pulls the trigger right here. Look at this screen roll. Bucket Irish. Rest, and this is updated. ESPN Analytics says Notre Dame now a 45% chance to win it, followed by NC State, Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, at, or pardon me, Florida State at 5%. They upset the third seed Syracuse yesterday. That 45% for Notre Dame is up from 38 yesterday. And I, I would give Florida State a lot more percentage than five, because they played the best I've seen them play yesterday. They, they look terrific, and Virginia Tech just one of six from three. Amor struggling to start this game, just as she did yesterday. Left alone, Anna DeWolf, got it. Good ball movement by the Irish. See, I think Virginia Tech, because they want to double the block, they've got to be aware of the shooters on the weak side. This is an excellent passing team, Notre Dame. Biggest lead of the game on this 10-2 run. Amor, just one for six from the floor, did hit an early three. Citron back on Amor, trying to face guard her, which means she's not going to help. She's only going to try to keep Amor from catching. Make someone else score. And that's Karis Baker for the three. 84% of the shots she's taken this year have been from distance, and she hits him in a really nice clip. Cuts the lead down to four. Again, Hidalgo taking a rest on the bench. KK Bransford and Nat Marshall now in the game for the Irish. Westbelt with the miss. Baker. Good recognition by Kayla King to run Westbelt off the three point line. Don't let her catch and shoot. Make her make a play off the bounce. Now, Amor directing traffic. Picked up two early fouls yesterday, and Kenny Brooks said that he actually thought that was a good thing. The strap misses because she was able to not just rest, but to sit and watch on the bench and observe and see what else was going on and calm herself down a little bit. Bransford with the basket, and then Georgia came out and had a terrific second half. Guarded by Bransford. That's a tough shot on the fadeaway. Marshall gets tied up on the rebound attempt. Virginia Tech basketball. There are so many ways that missing Elizabeth Kitley affects Virginia Tech's team. Right here in the double team, not the same size in that trap. The skip along the baseline. And here comes KK Bransford. Nobody really stops the ball, and she goes right to the front of the rim. I mean, Strack's got to turn around and shadow her a little bit. She's got to shade her some. Make her change her direction at least, not give her a straight line drive. Bransford had eight against Louisville yesterday. Played them for the second straight time after beating them in the regular season finale. Hidalgo's back in, streaking down the court. 
Good pickup by King. She's a menacing defender out there on the perimeter. Now Kayla King doing the similar thing on this end of the floor, trying to deny Hildago the basketball. Nice club off the bounce, has it roll off. Amor only had one assist yesterday. She's just got blocked by Westbound. Citron alone in the corner. Maddie Westbell. It's like there's three of them out there today. Bransford misses. Citron couldn't handle it. But here's a foul. Maddie Westbell doing it everywhere. I mean, this is a blow by in transition, but the second level is Maddie Westbell, and she does a great job of blocking the shot into their transition game. Because Citron had an open three on the other end. Kenny Brooks. In his eighth year, Virginia Tech took his team to the Final Four last year, got their first regular season championship in this league this season. But playing without his superstar, Liz Kitley, for at least the rest of this ACC tournament. Hidalgo. Has she, a, she has a lot of strengths, too. One of them getting the free throw <laughs> line, right? She has a lot of strengths. I mean, her explosion off this screen, right? She reads the second level so well. And that's what makes a good ball screen offense is not just getting past the primary, but getting past the screen, getting your hips and shoulders level or past the screen, and then being able to see all the options in front of her. And she's got a lot of options. Hidalgo getting to the free throw line on average seven times per game, where she hits 78%. Neil Ivey, her head coach, was an elite point guard herself when she played for Muffet McGraw, won a national championship back in 01. And this is Division I ranks, not for freshmen, for everybody. Tops in the entire country in steals, third in points, top 25 in assists. And she is just such a pest back there as a defender. King, nice pass over to Strap. Nice delivery by Kayla King. Draws the help, drops it off. Inside a minute now to go in the first quarter of this first semifinal. NC State, Florida State follow. Hidalgo all alone over there. Got inside of Wenzel, but missed. Got a chance for two for one here. Since you trail, you might consider it. But Baker loves to shoot threes. And they are, they did consider it because she did have a wide open look. Hidalgo just blew by King, pulled up. Been short on a couple of her jumpers today. Didn't shoot the ball particularly well yesterday either. This is where Kayla King, having a veteran player on the floor, understands time and score. So, so they are smart. getting the ball back. Yep. And Shot clock off. Benzo. Kayla King a little bit over aggressive there. Picks up that foul. And that is King's second. That's so not that's a smart. really that's a bad foul, right? Yeah, that's bad, Pam. That's not smart. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to do it anyway, but especially if Wait, it gives you two. Right. 94 feet away from the basket. And she knows better. So she sits down with just under five seconds left to go. Nat Marshall will inbound it as Hidalgo comes into the front court. Citron. It's taken away by Baker. Notre Dame up three after one. Carly Wenzel off the bench. She's going to have to play some serious minutes. The old give and go right here and a finish at the rim. And they've earned it in the ACC. They're a four seed, yet they have the best strength of schedule and the best net. And and that UConn win helped them. Big time, and they've, they've won six straight games, ending with some wins with the full strength Virginia Tech team included. One at Duke, two straight against Louisville. And this one certainly would help out as well. Virginia Tech showing some zone. This possession off the timeout. Hidalgo first. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. She starts seeing a big basket. That's an issue. She missed both of her three-point shot, three point attempts yesterday. Notre Dame missed six of its last seven shots in the first quarter after a hot start. 
Samuel hit a three early in yesterday's game. That's a really good box out by Watson. I love that twist action on the top of the floor. The difference is it's usually Kitley and Amor doing that. The Wolf just a little bit too strong. Samuel Kenny, gets the rebound, pardon me. Kenny Brooks playing the percentages here. They hit one three, they missed one three. Let's see how long they stay in the zone. On the other side, though, Notre Dame has played only man, and in the first meeting, according to Synergy, that's all they played. They didn't show any zone in that first matchup. Yeah, which is rather unusual for them. This is a beautiful step in, wide open, nobody even close. That's how you see a big basket. It's the true freshman from New Jersey. And of that game played on the last day of February, the win against Virginia Tech, Coach Ivy said it was a phenomenal game and called it a magical night. Back in the man, already got out of the zone, only two possessions. Citron. Citron has a very quiet demeanor, but her game is very loud. Listen, if you let Notre Dame play horse, yeah. you're going to lose. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to get out and cover the three-point shooters. That was knocked out by Notre Dame. Look at all the distance here between Citron and the closest defender. That's a long ways before a contest. You got to come with a much longer closeout and run her off the three-point line. 19 seconds to shoot. Amor with the inbounds. Look for Amor to get it right back. Here's Eck, who is 0 for 10 from the floor in this tournament. They bump off and switch. Single digits on the shot clock. Strack. Kitley would have shot that. And he a shot. Samuel's got to chuck it. Not in time. When the ball stays on top of the free throw line and you don't get any penetration below the free throw line, it's tough to run your offense. You have to get the basketball in the gaps, piece of the paint, below the free throw line and make the defense shrink. Wenzel comes in for Eck, 0 for 3 from the floor in this game is Matilda. First year after coming over from Michigan State. Wenzel comes in and right away gets a turnover. Strack working hard against Watson underneath. That pass was low and taken away by Citron. Fourth turnover for the Hokies. Watson right back to DeWolf, but Amor sticks her hands in. And the possession arrow sends it over to Tech. Back-to-back -back turnovers by Notre Dame. Now, this is a Notre Dame team that in years past had a negative turnover margin, but in this year, Neal Ivey's team is plus 4.6. I always thought that was one of the issues that they had advancing in the postseason, but I think Hannah Hidalgo has cleaned oh, all yeah. of that up. I think she can clean up a lot of things. Yes, she can. What a difference she has made. Olivia Miles not able to play all year. She has already said that she will come back to the Irish next year after a lot of speculation from people, let's just say, not in the know, <laughs> thinking that she might leave. Citron just committed a foul, but that, Olivia Miles and Hannah Hidalgo, come on. And Citron? Yeah, it'll be really interesting to watch, won't it? A lot of talent. Amor, nope. Hidalgo just has that second gear she can put on, but her touch has not been there around the rim tonight or this afternoon. Virginia Tech shooting just 21%. Their 12 points, which they're stuck on, 12 points scored in the first quarter, the lowest scoring first quarter game of the year. Hidalgo just picked up her first foul. Strack goes out. And some Samaya Suffering comes in. We yeah. didn't see her yesterday. She didn't play yesterday. She hasn't gotten a lot of minutes. She's been playing behind Amor. 
Now they're going to play together with two point guards. So this is a smaller lineup on the floor for Kenny Brooks. So for number 12 in white, she's a freshman from Charlotte. Shot clock, dying, Amor. Amor now one for nine from the floor, and she just committed a foul, but it's just her first. When I spoke to Amor before the game, I asked her what she did to rehab from yesterday, knowing she was going to have to carry another heavy load and a lot of minutes. And she said, I got in the pool outside because the pool was cold. Instead of taking a cold whirlpool, she took the pool route, which I love. I thought that was a great idea. Well, another thing that she has to prepare for is to play smart. Kenny Brooks was telling us earlier, she picked up her second foul in that first quarter, and the thing that they needed the most was understanding how she needed to impact the game. She made that foul. Kenny Brooks looked at her and just pointed at his head. She shook her head, and now we'll see if they can make the adjustment. There's the skill that comes with what Georgia Amor does, but then there's the intangible and the confidence, and you know this Virginia Tech team is shaking a little bit without Kitley. So that's another reason why she needs to be on the floor. Even if she doesn't put up the best stats, her confidence and it, that intangible will be so important for Kenny Brooks' team. Bransford just picked up her first foul. Citron has two, so she is on the bench now for the Irish. Virginia Tech has not scored in this quarter. Just six points for Notre Dame. Three rims out. Virginia Tech has not been good from three-point range in their first two games of this tournament, which does not bode well, especially with no Kitley. Watson just tripled almost into Westbell, stays with it, and got fouled. I thought she double dribbled. Baker called for her first personal foul. And Watson goes to the free throw line. Second year at Notre Dame after transferring over from Oregon. Gets them both. It's an eight nothing. Virginia Tech, or Notre Dame run, pardon me. Tech still looking for its first points, and here's a foul. You know what, Pam, the Notre Dame defense on Amor has worked. I mean, it has been a good piece of strategy to deny her the basketball. And see, without Kitley on the floor, who demands a double, you can lock up on Amor and force somebody else. Without Kitley, it's much more challenging for Amor. And Kenny Brooks and Georgia Amor very much in sync. And he says probably about 70% of the time she'll come over and say what she's seeing. And he said about 75% of the time he'll agree with her. And the times he doesn't, he says he explains why he's decided to go in another direction. It's really a special relationship. Is it unique or is it trendy to see that the head coach is doing a lot of the individual workouts with a star player? Nice. What would you say? What, would you, what did you say? I think it's unique. Yeah, from I think what I've seen in practices. He does a lot of one-on-one -on -one with Liz Kitley as well. Great teacher of footwork. That was a nice move inside by Watson. Now, that is some size right there that is challenging for Virginia Tech to deal with. Amor gets it over to Samuel. Good look at the three, and finally, Virginia Tech gets a field goal in this quarter. I'd go right back inside. Inside five minutes to go. Playing four out, one in. Citron back in, playing with two fouls. A little chancy, but Bransford picked up two quick ones when she came in for. Here's Amor. Georgia just three points, one of nine from the floor. It was a three she hit early on. Drive in the baseline up. I mean, so change of pace. Isn't that exactly what Kenny Brooks just showed her? That little move over there about change of pace, and she blows by on the baseline. And that gets Hokie Nation 
up and vocal. There are a lot of Virginia Tech fans here. Good showing for Notre Dame, but not nearly as many as, the, as Tech. Much closer geographically. Westbelt's been quiet for a while. Shot clock winding down. The Hokie Nation in this building is just ready to explode. What an incredible job they've done in creating a fan base. Citron is terrific at blocking shots for a perimeter player, and then she was fouled by Wenzel, but Amor with something special. Georgia Amor, a little rock. The baby to sleep right here. Cross it over, keep going. I love it. She got that move down pat. There's some room underneath the basket. Amor, such a smart player. First team All-ACC performer again. Set the Virginia Tech program record for most assists and was the MVP of the tournament last year. Set a record for the most threes in a single tournament. Mm. Invaluable anyway, but especially now with Elizabeth Kittley out. Here's Amor. Taking it right to DeWolf. That is just highly athletic, that play right there. She basically just jumps over DeWolf. What a play. Explosive in the open floor. 7 nothing. Tech run to get to within four. Trailed by as many as 11. West Bay, all business, Pam. Yep. She doesn't change her expression no. much. Very oh. even. Second three of the game for Maddie. I enjoyed watching Catherine play for Muffet, and I'm really enjoying watching Maddie play. Two sisters both scoring over 1,000 points in their career. Amos hitting up, here she goes. <laughs> Westfeld with that little swat with her left hand to try to get Samuel away. And Kenny Brooks wanted a foul to be called, even though there was no contact that we could see. I think she was trying to get her a player to cut, is what I thought she was trying to do. That's, I'm sure that's Look at her this. story. Look at that. High off the glass, and then comes right back mid-range. Don't over-penetrate. Pull up and stick the 15-footer. Elizabeth Kitley in that last huddle was telling her team, while I much prefer her on the floor, ladies, she was very good in that huddle telling her team, we have to make sure that we're not playing on our heels. In their last matchup, Kenny Brooks said the same thing. We let them dictate where they were going to put us on the offensive end. We have to make sure that we're dictating where we're going on the offensive side. Also, Kitley said, remain in attack mode. We're in the bonus. Let's get some free throws. Really good point to bring up. And Nice job by Suffren to throw that drop down past the strack. Now there's the free throws that you're talking about, Angel. Attacking the basket. Strack now at the free throw line. She has been nicknamed Baby Kitley by her teammates. And she had the honor of putting the sticker up on the bracket in the back hallway to show that Virginia Tech had advanced. And you go against Kitley every day in practice. You gotta learn a few things. People huh? get them <laughs> confused on the road. They are very similar. 6'5, blonde hair. And you know, Strax footwork is coming along. And you learn from the master. Yeah, the best. With a great coaching staff. Strack, however, missed both free throws. Wenzel goes out. And Baker comes back in. So Coach Brooks has three true freshmen that he has used in this game. Oh, nice pass. There you go, and Citron with the finish. Beautiful pass, good basket cut, great scoring cut. Watch Citron, here she comes. Look at all that open space right there. Virginia Tech trailing the play. Citron keeps her eyes on the prize. Two fouls now on Baker. Anna Hidalgo, five rebounds, four points, and just one assist in this game. Three-point play completed. We get the lead back up to seven. 
Georgia Amor has scored the last six points for Virginia Tech. Hidalgo has not been on Georgia Amor very often, unless it's caught up in a switch. That pass was thrown to Neil Ivey, who is not eligible to play in this game. But boy, what a player she was, huh, at Notre Dame? Oh, goodness. I mean, I remember that 2001 championship in her hometown in St. Louis. And what a dream. Ruth Riley was the center on that team. National Player of the Year. What a great run. That was the start of it, the start of the dynasty for Coach McGraw. Citron can't get it off glass. Strack tried to get it over to Amor. So this is what Hidalgo does. She kind of hangs out and is able to steal so many passes in the backcourt. Leads the nation in steals. West Belt. Citron wanted it. Has a bit of a mismatch with suffering the freshman. Good D. thrown away. Coming up at halftime, and nothing but net crew has been here, and they are ready. That's Ivory Latta over there. Kelly Graham looking, of course, the coach. Muffet McGraw, Justin Walters as well. Coach, I see that foot tapping over there. Yeah. It's got to be agony still, right? Coach McGraw. And a couple of national championships, 936 wins, and has her own statue yeah. <laughs> outside of the arena. It's awesome. Expect more. That's the title of the book. If you haven't read it, you need to. It's awesome. Suffern just picked up her second foul. Both teams in the bonus. Citron at the line. Best. Free throw shooter in the ACC this season, 91%. And Coach Ivy takes this opportunity to talk to Hidalgo and DeWolf. Nothing flashy, all substance, outstanding skill set. And then you look at the stat sheet at the end of the game, and Sonia Citron has just stuck yeah. the whole thing. Very, Full of numbers. Good. And a very smart move by Coach Ivy. Citron has two fouls. She sits her down, so she, there's no chance of her picking up her third before the break. Amor now guarded by Hidalgo. There's that change of pace. Hold up there, Watson and Hidalgo with good defense. Shot clock is off. That's the eighth turnover for Virginia Tech. Kylie Watson's had an impact on this game in the first half. Six points, three rebounds, and some great defense. Hannah's going to lull us to sleep a little bit and then take off. This is what I call the rope of dope because the explosion is getting ready to come. Here we go. She gets the Bransford screen. Westbelt for three. They got the shot they wanted. But Notre Dame takes a nine-point lead into the locker room. The 23 points scored by Virginia Tech, their lowest. Get her going. Now she's been sitting on 999 career points, as you mentioned, for three straight games. And ironically, she had 12 points against Notre Dame, shot the ball well in the regular season loss at South Bend. Since then, it's all goose eggs. Sandra Citron, great start for her. She had eight points in the first half, all of them in the second quarter. This is a catch and shoot rhythm basketball team, Notre Dame, and you got to bust their rhythm somehow. Shaw with the miss. Amor can't get it to go. And Westbell comes away with it. Boy, there are a couple of great opportunities there. They are three for 10 on layups. Hidalgo! And Notre Dame on the other side, Pam, is four, five for nine on layups. And we just saw them, saw Virginia Tech miss underneath. Lowest scoring half of the season. And there's Zach, you talked about it, trying to get her going, but she missed again. Citron and Hidalgo, two of the very best. I mean, this is just really good pin down action and curl by Citron, and 
when you're locking trail and chasing behind, you got to have some help there. But the problem is what we just diagrammed at halftime. You can't help on the strong corner. They're too good at three-point shooters. Ninth turnover now for the Hokies. Citron comes away with it. Nice little hesitation as you buried it. So good. Time out. Absolutely. Got to take it. 39-23, the Irish starting to separate what was 10 points. Three straight ACC tournament championships broken by Virginia Tech last year, but Virginia Tech in trouble right now. Notre Dame on an 11-0 run going back to the third quarter in this semifinal matchup, Citron. I mean, you execute, you run what you want, you get the shot you want, and it's just not Kitley. Yeah, absolutely missing. And that's no, no slight on Strack. She's just a young no. freshman. There's only one Elizabeth Kitley. And they have told Strack she doesn't have to try to be Liz, just be the best version of herself in this. But she's a, she's, they call her baby Kitley. That's the real Kitley. That's the full up, grown up Kitley, who unfortunately is unavailable for this ACC tournament. They will let her rest and reevaluate after the tournament. And, Hopefully, if she is available, she, she will get about three weeks since the last time she played. That's the one thing with the week-long break after the ACC tournament. Strack gets the board. Claire Strack comes down with the rebound, and I know Kenny Brooks is happy that he didn't redshirt her. That was the plan when she came in as a freshman, playing behind Elizabeth Kitley, and he said, I wouldn't understand what we would do without her. She's come along well. She understands learning from Elizabeth Kitley in their workouts together as well. Yes, she has a high ceiling, but the fact that she get these reps now is better for her down the road. She's been a role player for them, Angel, that has come in, and her stat line is rebound, then score. Well, now it's opposite. Her role has to change. She's got to score and then rebound. Jones will attack the basket. That was a decent look, but Virginia Tech still hasn't scored in this quarter. Westbell drives on the freshman and finishes left. She attacks the top foot. I mean, it was a dominant attack to close out, and Westbell just says, well, I'm gonna attack the top foot. Biggest lead, 18 points. They were up actually 10 at the half. The officials looked at a play and decided it was that Notre Dame had a three and not a two that had been credited. So that's why it went from a nine point lead to a 10 point lead at the half. Citron will change the direction and the drive. Wenzel comes up with the miss. And Amor, right? What do you see? A little slow coming back up the floor. She. Looked like she needed a second to catch her breath. Instead, she's got Hidalgo coming right down the court. Good defense by Georgia. And then Citron got fouled. But yeah, Amor looks a little hampered, limping a little bit. Well, that's when Kenny Brooks doesn't make eye contact with her. You don't look <laughs> at her because you don't want to take her out. And you know, she doesn't want to come out. She, she doesn't, but you don't want to look at her no. either. She just, while she was crouching, catching her breath, she had the presence of mind to talk to her teammates. Maddie Westbelt has been smooth as silk in this game. Notre Dame went seven and two in February. It was almost like a flip after they beat UConn. You know, they really started to turn it on. Certainly helped in their net ranking. It's become a turnover fest for Tech. Terrific catch by DeWolf and the finish. Olivia Miles can appreciate that kind of stuff. Boy, it's 17-0 run now going back to the, the uh, second quarter. Well, they're just getting, like you heard Maddie Westbell say to Angel on the way to the locker room, we can get what we want. And they are getting that. And it's a thin Virginia Tech defense without the three-time ACC Player of the Year and chop blocker. But there's a development because Hannah Hidalgo just picked up her third personal foul for the Irish. KK Bransford comes in for her. I remember yesterday, Pam, Notre Dame had a 22-point lead on Louisville, and Louisville cut the deficit in the second half. And Citron's just picked up her third. So some foul trouble for the Irish with still 
16 minutes left to go in this game. There's an offensive foul. I think they get Westbelt, they do. Or pardon me, Summiel, my bad. Summiel, number 20 for Virginia Tech. It's a twist action right here. And the official's going to say she didn't give her a chance to see or have a step or see the screen. Watson gets it into Westbelt, guarded by Baker. Good hands by Virginia Tech to knock it away. Citron carried it. Now they're going to say it's a foul and count it. That was a high dribble, but she was hit. That's just great athleticism. Number 13, Clara Strack enters for Who was the foul on? Wenzel. Got the foul. Sonia Citron on the line for the Irish. She has. Sonia Citron did not play nine games this year, sprained her knee in mid November, and took her a while to come back. She Played with a brace for a little while. Now she's got that sleeve on her right leg. And talked to Coach Ivy about a week or so ago, and she said, yeah, Sonia's back, and I think she's correct. It seems like the 100% Sonia we're used to seeing, which is scary if you're an opponent. Got it. Yeah, she knows they need buckets, and she might have to start calling her own number right now. First points for Virginia Tech in this half. Took them four and a half minutes to score. Baker went over the back. Virginia Tech foul number 10, Karis Baker. That is three on Karis, who is the daughter of Vin Baker. Played in the NBA for 15 years, also at the University of Hartford, and that's where he raised his little girl Karis in West Hartford. Plus Bell recovers. Doggo on the bench with the three fouls. Citron out there playing with three. Westbelt, she's so good going to the left using that hand. Yeah. So skilled. I mean, you'd like to change the rhythm of the game with your defense, but you, it's hard to play zone. Kenny Brooks showed two possessions of zone in the first half. They went one for two outside the three-point line. Oh, Streck thought about it. She's only one for two from three for the entire season. Now she's inside where she's more comfortable, but Watson just stuffs her. I mean, she was open earlier on a deeper catch on that slice cut they like to run, but you got to find her. Timing is so much of it as well. Watson has a lot of miles under her belt. She's been an impactful player for Notre Dame off the bench. Notre Dame last in the ACC in bench points this season, only averaged 13, but their bench has been fantastic today. West Bell, look at that. Beautiful, high off the glass. What a beautiful touch for their point forward. Notre Dame hoping to get back. Let's take a look at the last five a a ACC tournament champs. It was all NC State all the time for three years. Virginia Tech broke that string last year. Notre Dame's last championship in 2019 is when they came into this league. Well, they won, what, the first four? Yeah, I mean, Muffet McGraw came in and they won in 14, 15, 16, and 17. Four in a row. Did not win in 18, came back to win it in 19. Virginia Tech has been really struggling. Watson lost the ball, and she is in pain. Neil Ivey first off the bench. And look at Liz Kitley. She I mean, it's can't bear to watch. Yeah, I mean, it, it's... You, you never like to see... And you see how emotional Elizabeth is. I mean, she cares. I mean, you don't like to see anyone get hurt at all. But when it happens in March, it's, it's, there's not time to recover for most athletes. So Ann Marquez is the athletic trainer. And it was her left knee. And for Liz Kitley, this suffering a knee injury Last Sunday in their regular season finale, no doubt thinking about that. But talk about Liz Kidley as a basketball player, but as a human being, she's amazing as well. 
And Kenny Brooks had talked about how she made several visits to his office this past week. He said they would talk, they would laugh, they would cry. She would come back, they would cry some more. It's just been a very, very emotional time for an exceptional athlete and human being. And now Kylie Watson is being looked at. Take her probably straight back to the locker room. Keep an eye on her left leg. It buckled around the knee. So Kylie Watson has been helped back into the locker room for the Irish. This is a team that is not very deep at all. Olivia Miles not playing all year. Fasson Prosper has been out since late November with a lower body injury. Emma Rich had hip surgery that ended her season. Kayla King with her first points inside to Bransford. I mean, Virginia Tech can play better defense than that. They got to guard the ball better. They got to get some, you know, some more possessions here, Pam, because it's going to be, you want to speed the game up, but it's hard without their depth. You know, they're not a pressing team by nature anyway. And like I said before, you want to change. They've trapped ball screens. They've shown some zone. Notre Dame has just been that good on the offensive end today. Really sharp. Matt Marshall picked up her first personal foul with Watson out. It's basically Marshall in the post off the bench. Amor, beautiful floater. I mean, I'd be OK if, if Amor took every shot moving forward the rest of the game since they're down by 24. Here, here's a little zone. Trying to change the rhythm. Let's see if they can defend the three-point line. Hidalgo back in there with three fouls. Westbelt has been terrific. Drives left, misses right. Samuel. I mean, did you see Kayla King get in a stance and drop her hips lower than Westbelt's? That's why she was able to defend that play. Amor! Three! Every time, Pam. Got to really communicate if you're Virginia Tech. Citron going by Wenzel, kicks it out to Hidalgo. Marshall with the turn. Two possessions of zone, two stops. Amor guarded out there now by Westbell. Misha. Not known for her offensive finesse, but Sumio gives them an extra 20 seconds. Amor just found some iron with the Hokey fans about to explode if that went in. Fouled on her way to the basket. And that is four fouls now on Carly Wenzel. So teams in the bonus for the rest of the quarter. Adago, just her second trip to the line, one of two from the free throw line today. As Matt Marshall has a word with Coach Ivy. Wenzel goes out. They get bigger as Strack comes in. Adago has been such a prolific scorer. We've got Caitlin Clark. We've got Juju over there at USC. 
scoring more than her. But that's it. Well, they're next, right? Caitlin's it right now, and, and then Juju and Hannah. And Madison Booker at Texas, the Big 12 Player of the Year, freshman. Michaela Williams at LSU, a freshman. Game's in good sh shape. Samuel, that's off. Oh, but it backed in. She was going in to rebound it, but it banked on in. Amor had scored 12 of their last 15 before Samuel got that three. It allows him to stay in the zone. Hidalgo over Strzok, net. <laughs> Hannah now into double figures. Amor went by Citron, who's playing the three fouls. Switch to the inside, left hand without a shot blocker there. That's just really good. Yeah, Amor, so much skill. She has an option to come back next year. I know a lot of WNBA GMs are taking a hard look at her. I think she'd be a first round pick for real. And you my know, first round pick, even this year. You'd think she'd be in the Australian pipeline for the Olympic team, but she tells us she's not. Hidalgo inside. We're in the last 10 seconds of this third quarter. Dominated by Notre Dame. But Georgia Amor giving it her all to get them back into it. They're never out of it as long as they have the Aussie. Uh, and you win this league in the arguably the toughest year it's ever been. The winning team wins it with four losses. That's how competitive the league has been. They've earned it already. And the big question mark is Liz Kitley, who will not play in this tournament. Misha has been fouled. Pam Ward, Deb Antonelli, and Angel Gray joining you. This is game one of our semifinal Saturday. There's Kitley, who will uh, be reevaluated and Hope to have an update before the NCAA tournament. Nat Marshall just picked up her second foul. But the big question with people not knowing her availability, injuries are supposed to be a factor in seeding for the NCAA selection committee. Well, I think you go with precedents from last year with Notre Dame and Olivia Miles' injury at the end of the year, which they never reported on and it did not affect their seeding. I think when it happens so late, you really don't have time to adjust as a team, so you need to go with the body of work. Which has been terrific for them. Kenny Brooks did have a statement yesterday about Kitley's status, saying that her health and safety, the main concern, she will sit this weekend, be reevaluated, and reiterated the health and future of Liz is the main thing they are thinking about right now. So she is definitely out for this ACC tournament. And as we said, they could get about three weeks between her injury and the beginning of the NCAA tournament. Does any of this conversation stir up the Florida State college football situation? Oh, gosh. <laughs> but then you throw in. Right. But then you throw in the, the transfer portal. And, you know, that's, college football is messed up on many levels. But to be able to enter the transfer portal before your season is over is a problem. Anyway. But yes, and then Florida State got humiliated by Georgia. It was, it was, and, and, the, and the Georgia people felt bad for Florida State. Anyway, Westbound, in and out. But there's no doubt that Virginia Tech has had an outstanding season. And Amor is an All-American. I, I believe so. And, and I think there's three in this league, Pam. There's three. It's Kitley Amor and Hidalgo. Yes. And they're hitting Notre Dame right now when Notre Dame is at their hit, hitting their stride. And we, let's go back to opening day, shall we? All the way to Paris, where South Carolina beat them by 29 points, scored 100 points against them. And it was almost like, uh-oh, what's Notre Dame going to be like this year? And they have answered. Kayla King answers. Okay, they got it to 15. Yep, it had been. A 27-point lead. If you can get it to eight and make it a three possession, you put game pressure on Notre Dame just like Louisville did yesterday in the fourth quarter. And Louisville came from well back. Hidalgo a little bit too strong. Here's Georgia Amor. When you're up 27, it's much easier for those shots to go in. Now you got some game pressure. If they can make a basket here. King, two in a row. Samuel 
to Georgia Amor. DeWolf gets the rebound. And now Hidalgo will settle. I'd go right back to West Bell or Citron here. But DeWolf, oh, DeWolf. Yeah, that's she's a pretty good option. She's a terrific scorer at Fordham. This is her first year at Notre Dame. Scored over 2,100 points in her college career at Fordham. Three time first team All Atlantic 10 selection. She's a native of Maine. Like Mackenzie Holmes, another injured kid for Indiana. We hope she can get some good news. She got five minutes in the game yesterday, but only five. And they. Yeah. Georgia Amor will step back. Nishaw couldn't get there in time. I mean, DeWolf is going to be sitting in the gap right here, catch and shoot. This is the danger of trying to play zone, right? She's just in the gap, right in between where you have to communicate coverage there. West Bell. What a game she has put together. 18 points, had 13 yesterday against Louisville. Let's take a look at our star stories for players that have been crushing it. Brought to you by Crush. They are the big three for Notre Dame, and they have delivered this afternoon. Yeah, they have been so solid. Catch and shoot in the mid-range. Doing a little bit of everything in their ball screen coverage as well. Very good, connected, locked in group. But Hidalgo picked up her fourth foul in the backcourt. King fires away. Westbelt and Mishaw got tangled up a little bit, so Citron came in to get the rebound. The Wolf again. That's a killer. Wow. There's an experienced player. Maybe not a lot of NCAA tournament or postseason experience, but that's a player that will matter. Another option for Notre Dame. Yeah, and that veteran presence that you mentioned, nice and calm in these situations. Confident in her shot, as is Amor, but this is where you have to wonder it. Amor's very fit. Some of those shots now falling short, plays a lot of minutes, and goes 100% all the time. Transferred, swatted by Samuel. And then Bransford fouled, or fouled a tech player, I should say. The deep corner has worked for the Irish. They go one more, swing, swing, open three. Very good rhythm offensive team. They are a catch and shoot three. And part of that is because they have such balance. You really got to guard the ball and keep the ball in front put good ball pressure on it so they don't see all those options. And DeWolf with a couple of big threes, part of an eight nothing run that has stemmed the tie that was in Virginia Tech's favor for a while and got the crowd engaged. Tech hasn't scored now in over three minutes. Oh, man. When they run their offense, it can be yeah. just a, a thing of beauty. That's what I'm talking about. No ball pressure, freely cutting through the lane. That's the difference in zone. And if Kitley's on that back row, she communicates. She bogs stuff up. She protects at the third level. Let I me mean, watch this wide open space in here. She freely cuts from the weak side. Track the true freshman back there. That's that 45 degree cut we like to talk about in basketball. King with the miss. Hidalgo gets yet another rebound. Inside five minutes to go. The winner gets the winner of our second semifinal between NC State and Florida State, who upset Syracuse last night. That game is going to be fast. Yes. Both teams right. like to play with tempo. There will be no lollygagging in that game. Hidalgo over Strack. Virginia Tech has missed nine straight shots. That breaks it. 
with Amor, who has a chance for a three-point play when we come back. The only thing we really haven't seen is a little float game. There it is. Guards in March. That's how you win. Amor can't get the basket, and Kylie Watson back on the bench came out with crutches after she suffered an apparent left leg injury earlier in this quarter. Notre Dame down yet another player. KK Bransford with the rebound. Deb Antonelli and Angel Gray joining you. Stay with us for semifinal number two, Florida State, NC State, Citron. I mean, that's just a nice inversion to the block and the size advantage. Citron so skilled in there over Amor. Largest loss ever by a number one seed was way back in 1984 when Carolina upset number one Virginia by 28 points. And we are close to that now. It is 25. And the asterisk is no Liz Kitley. And the Irish, not to take anything away from the Irish, because as we mentioned, they have had some great wins over the, the close of this season. Destiny in their own hands when they had Virginia Tech and Louisville come to the town, beat them both to get this number four seed. They get the double bye, and they are three minutes and change away from going to the final. Dalgo, transferred to Wolf. Oh, Citron with another cut. Westbelt rescued the possession. DeWolf looks like she hurt her elbow on that pass. Dalgo, looks like she might have slipped. How about that? Making something out of nothing for the Irish. Strack, that's a tough matchup against Westbell. I want to give some attention to what Olivia Sum Sumiel has done today with Virginia Tech needing players to just really step up. How about a double-double, third of the season, 10 rebounds, and, I'm sorry, 10 points and 16 rebounds for Sumiel. That's impressive. On the glass, hard working, got the starting uh, position midway through the season. Here comes a little 2-2-1. Rebounding ties her career high, 16 boards. More pretty stuff into Bransford. That's the other thing you don't see many teams press, not just because Hidalgo is untrappable, unflappable, which is what I used to say about Ivory Latta all the time, but because when you open up the court, she can see and she can get some backside scoring, and their transition offense is to the spots. I think DeWolf's elbow's okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. <laughs> Well, Anna DeWolf filling it up now. She has 14 points. Strack. Nice work against Marshall, but couldn't get it to fall. Virginia Tech just five for 16 on layups around the rim. Notre Dame in control of 32. Being the best takes hard work. It takes early mornings, planning, precision, sweat, sacrifice, and teamwork. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in their game. Old Dominion Freight Line, helping the world keep promising. Welcome back, Kenny Brooks' face tells it all. Notre Dame up by 32 in this semifinal. The Irish. That's a walk by Nat Marshall coming in as the number four seed. Virginia Tech 
the number one seed. But Notre Dame with a couple of monster runs right now on a 21-4 run. Earlier in the game, a 24-2 run. Virginia Tech shooting just 30% from the floor. Notre Dame over 50%. Wenzel now with five points. But Virginia Tech going to get on the bus, go back home to Blacksburg, rest people up, and we hope for the best for whatever news we can get about Liz Kittley. Selection Sunday is on St. Patrick's Day this year, March 17th. I'm sure everyone will have a clear head when they watch that selection show. <laughs> Present company probably not accepted. <laughs> Oh, one of the great personality qualities about you, Pam, <laughs> that I love is your Guinness conversations. Oh, you know, got to get a Guinness, but we hope we get a Kitley back, certainly, for the NCAA tournament. Notre Dame about to win game number 25 on the season. And we'll play the winner of NC State. Florida State coming up just a little bit later. About a half hour after this game is over. They beat Florida State and Tallahassee in an epic double overtime game in February. Got pounded by NC State in Raleigh right after that. Well, you know what? This is the ACC champs. And Kenny Brooks will have time in the laboratory this week pending the status of Elizabeth Kitley to get everybody's confidence back and to get the scheme back in order and get ready to play in March at the NCAA tournament. Notre Dame with an 82 to 53 victory over Virginia Tech. They head back to the